Back in the cruise, Paul McBeth, back stateside. How was Mexico? It was great. It was a beautiful place. My first time there. Um, and it was good to just go down there. I've been to Cabo before. I've been to Tijuana before. So I've seen both sides of what Mexico has, the off has to offer. But uh, going there for, for a purpose more than a vacation was really cool. Yeah, I, I know we could probably spend a whole hour or so just talking about this, but some, you know, you posted some stuff on Instagram people should check out um, for the quick highlights, but, you know, what's the, like, enduring memory in this moment of getting that first course in the ground for your foundation? Uh, just seeing how so many of the youth took to it, you know, the staff took to it very well for something they'd never heard of. Um, uh, one thing I was very adamant about was, like, let's not over-teach it, let's just introduce it, because the last thing you want is people to be introduced to something and then you're already correcting them telling them what to do you know just let them run with it let them enjoy it um you know so we taught the staff a little bit more in depth as, as the kids get get better and want to learn more they'll ask questions so this is the next step from there but uh, just seeing the, the true joy that they were having playing disc golf throwing it at at uh, cactuses cactuses they were like parking cactuses so they're metal plastic little things but they were still objects uh and then we got the course in and they were able to play and and just you know, explore, and a lot of the staff said that this is something that they're really excited about because they can actually go on walks and talk with some of the kids because not all of them are coming from the best place. A lot of them have some, you know, personal struggles and things like that. So this is just another aspect that they can, you know, reach out to these kids and, and, and hopefully give them an opportunity of maybe a job and, and, and you know, taking care of the disc golf courses or, or other aspects of that. So, um, yeah, it was just a, it was an incredible experience. Awesome, uh, you know, phenomenal job there. Let's turn the focus to competing this week. You know this track. You've won here many times. Give us the breakdown. What's the strategy at De La? Well, what do you got to look out for? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's the first disc golf course that we've played in a long time. Uh, we've been at, at golf courses everywhere all year. If I mean, Jonesboro is the only other golf course, non-golf course I can think of off the top of my head, but uh, it's still a golf course-like feel. But uh, yeah, first one where you really have to control some mids, control some fairways, spin rate, the angles you land your discs on, and the, the importance of putting. Um, because if you're not putting well, you're not going to have any confidence going into these greens. And, and we all know they can just keep going. You know, they go over those cliffs and they can just keep going. And now you're looking at a birdie. Or you're looking at a birdie, now you're looking at a double bogey at best. So, um, I mean, I, to be honest, I feel great going into that. I think that week off really helped me. Um, Putt feels really good, uh, and that's that's huge out here. And, and this tournament always seems to be a big indicator for who's going to be a favorite at Worlds. You know, if you look back, out of eight of the last seven of the last eight years, it's been Rick and I winning this. So um, that's kind of been who's won the last seven. You know, seven of the last eight Worlds. So uh, I think this is this is a big one that that kind of leads towards that that title. I noticed you said your putt's feeling good. I haven't heard you say that a whole lot this year. So yeah. that ought to be a good thing for you. Yeah, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. It's a good time. Uh, you know, not 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 far away from the World Championships. Uh, I think that's uh, the big one that I'm really looking forward to. I know we had a, a course shift for next week to another golf course. So, uh, um, yeah, I think this one being on a disc golf course, we don't really have worlds too often on golf courses. So um, I think this is, like I said, a great indicator for, for who's going to be a favorite at worlds. And uh, last question for me, on the strategy front, you know, shifting top of the world from the very last hole to very early in the round, it kind of makes the course flow a little bit differently. Do you change up the strategy because of that? Uh, actually, I, I was, uh, I, I played with uh, Hannah, uh, Juliana, and uh, Stacy Ronsley. So we, we, I was playing with them, and we got up to hole 20, what is it, 22 on the, the layout that we're playing now here for the Masters Cup. And I was like, man, why? I keep conserving too much energy at this point because I'm used to going up that hill after that, so you need to save some energy. But now you got those three flat holes to finish, or those two out in the open, and then you know those three flat holes to finish to where I don't have to conserve that energy anymore. You know, you kind of get that that early start, get the get the blood flowing. So it is not as a, a dramatic finish. I feel like they're off the top of the world. It's kind of a boring two finishing holes, but uh, I understand it. It flows better, um, and it kind of. I don't know. To be honest, it is it is weird feeling, but but that's just how they want to run the event. Paul, Chris with Gatekeeper Media. I just have a couple questions as well. Um, having so much experience here, what is it just about this course that you love so much that just makes it such a memorable 
track that's been around for 20 plus years. Yeah, I think that goes both ways, you know, the love and hate on that, so I'll answer both sides, but um, it's just one, I mean, I grew up in Southern California, so six hours south of this, um, and this was one that, it was a long travel back in the day to do, you know, by car, but it was one that you always did every year, so um, one, I think it's just the challenge of that, controlling your ankles, your spin rate, the speed of your disc, all, all the above, you need to have you know all that control on your shots or you could be down these cliffs a lot or hitting early trees so I love that factor I love the challenge uh, but then the negative part is that it's just it's it's squeezed you know we don't have much parking we don't have warm-up areas and and it is a disc golf course public course so we're out there practicing with you know everyone you know it doesn't feel like a lot of the pro tours they close the course down we have it to ourselves here we're battling with locals. They're jumping in front of you. They're, you know, they're pushing you. It's, it's, it's all sorts of, some headaches there. But, uh, you know, if that could get fixed, I think this is one that could, that could stick around and, and, and make a few changes to make a little bit more, I guess, a higher par. So a little bit more par fours. I know they put in a few this year, but uh, I think, it, I think it still has some, some uh, steps to climb. But uh, it's one that could stick around. I feel like. Awesome. And back to the foundation, uh, where are your eyes set next? Uh, where's the next location you guys are going to... We have a couple more projects. I can't say yet until it's announced, but uh, because there's still a lot of moving parts, and until it's until it's announced, it won't be 100% confirmed. So uh, we do have a couple more projects, I'd say anywhere between two to four for 2021, and that, I think that's the goal we're going to keep. We're going to try to keep in the coming years is, is three to five projects because I feel like that's a that's a good number um, and then it also comes to you know it's a foundation so the more donations the more um, you know projects we could probably fit in a year and, and the more help that we have so this year three to five is our is our ultimate goal awesome thank you Paul Matt PDGA um, you mentioned that um, this course is a uh, different than a lot of the courses you guys see on tour um, but it's also a course you know really well how much prep did you do coming into the tournament and what's your focus when you're out here uh, getting ready uh, as far as course prep it's one that I know pretty well um, but I've only played it once with my disc craft disc so I'm still kind of learning the the angles and stuff like that for you know when I'm throwing a buzz out there rather than what I was throwing before and some of the drivers and over the top shots uh, and one of the most difficult things that that changes so much it, it's kind of you know a luck thing is, is do you stick in a tree or not so um, as far as course prep is kind of finding the windows where, where you want to land because it's always changing out here we've since I started there's probably been a hundred trees that have fallen uh, so um, you know there's some different lines and things like that but but overall uh, I came back from Mexico a little early well I got here I got back in the States on Saturday so I've had a little bit more practice than most um, but uh, I think putting was a big focus, and that's something I feel really confident in. Not, not many players out here are in the business of collecting world championships. Um, I imagine that a, a big part of your focus you know, is leading up to Worlds. How much do you look at a tournament like this as Worlds prep, and how much do you, do you look at it standing on its own terms? Well, I feel like this is a huge one. You know, I think it's been a real big indicator on who's going to play well at Worlds. Um, and it has been, I mean, even if you look back on, on a longer history, you know, minus Nate Doss not winning this one ever, uh, that it kind of, I feel like it shows, you know, who could, who could be a favorite. And I've never played the Fort course, but from what I hear, it could be, you know, similar lines, similar, you know, kind of kind of angles and things like that. I don't think it has the elevation drops and such like that. But, uh, but then, uh, you know, if it had both courses like we have previously with the golf course, I think it'd almost be a perfect match. So... Um, this is, I don't put everything on this, on this tournament as far as a world's indicator, but I do want to continue working on stuff at this tournament in the lead up to worlds. There's a tradition here at, uh, uh Masters Cup of putting the, uh, the AM weekend winner on a card, feature card. Uh, you're playing with, uh, three previous winners of the, the Masters Cup and, a, and an, an MA1 player. What advice would you have for, uh, an AM coming in to play with, uh, three of the most well-known disc golfers in the world? Um... I don't, I th <laughs> it's hard to say. I think just play play his game. You know, he won last week for a reason. So uh, don't don't make yourself. You know, don't don't have high expectations. Don't don't come in with expectations. Just just go out there and play like you did last week, or how you do in your practices and things like that. Don't. There's no reason to put added pressure. We're all out there trying to win the tournament. So you know, just just try to focus on yourself because no matter what you do, the first round it's not gonna it's not gonna win the tournament for you. So.
Well, Paul, thanks so much for your time. Best of luck this weekend. Paul McBeth, everyone.